In this video, I'm going to be talking about the keys to building a defensive scheme in Madden. We're going to kind of give you a brief overview, and then we're going to be talking about uh, really the foundation or hallmark to any great defense. Now, the five things that I believe that every single defense really needs to be effective, the first thing that you have to be able to do on the defensive side of the ball is you have to be able to have some type of plan for having pressure. And really beyond that, we also, I think when we talk about pressure, you've got to have some kind of blitz threat. I don't care what year of Madden you played, Madden 23, Madden 22, Madden 21, Madden 20, Madden 19, it doesn't matter. If you look at any great defense, the defense is going to have a plan for how they're going to give you a blitz threat. Every single play, we want to at least have the threat that we could be sending pressure. What that's going to do is it's going to make it so that the opponent is not going to be able to just send five routes out every single time, but they're going to have to, you know, kind of think about it a little bit, right? So I think the threat of pressure is really, really important to any defensive system. It's really the hallmark of any great defense. Now, the second thing that I think is super important to uh, defense is coverage adjustments, right? How are you going to adjust to your coverage to the most popular formation? You could be a you could play man 90% of the time, match 90% of the time, zone 90% of the time. It doesn't necessarily matter what your base coverage system is, whether it's man, zone, or match. I think what's really important is what is your coverage adjustments and what is your plan for defending some of the most popular formations. For example, how are you going to defend gun bunch? How are you going to defend gun trips? How are you going to defend gun tight? How are you going to defend U trips? How are you going to defend in um, some of the random formations that you might face, right? What are your core coverage adjustments that you're going to have? I think you need a couple of these, right? You might have different defenses that you play against different formations, but every formation or every, every kind of core meta formation you have to have a plan for offensively, in my opinion, because you're going to see it a lot. Uh, the next thing that I think is super, super practical and super important is you have to have some kind of plan uh, for defending the run game. How are you going to stop the shotgun run game? And how are you going to stop the under center run game? That is something you have to have in your arsenal and in your in your tool belt whenever you're playing defense. Out of whatever formation you're running, I don't care what the formation is. Even dollar this year, you have to have some kind of plan for how you're going to stop the run. And then the fourth thing that I think is super practical and super important to having an effective defense in Madden is having some ability, having some kind of plan or some kind of uh, ability to play really good red zone slash goal line defense. I think that is one of uh, Madden games are won and lost. And it's interesting to me that a lot of people don't spend a significant amount of their game planning into how are we actually going to get stops inside the 15-yard line, the 10-yard line, the 5-yard line, and on the goal line. How are we going to get off the field and force our opponent to take threes as compared as opposed to taking sevens? And then the last thing that I think you have to, or the last check box that you've got to check on the defensive side of the ball for your defense to be elite, is you have to have a plan for either two minute or end of half scenarios. What do I mean by that? How are you going to make sure that at the end of the game, when they're trying to throw a Hail Mary, trying to throw a bomb concept, something, that you actually have something to take that away? What does your end of half defense look like, or what does your end of game defense look like? I also wanted to talk about a couple of principles for defense, and then we'll get into the blitzing aspect of this because that's the first thing we want to go over. A um, couple question or a couple principles of elite defense. I think by and large, you want to try to make everything look identical. This is one of the biggest principles that I've heard over the course of the last 10 to 15 years of playing Madden is if you want to play elite defense, you want to make every defense look identical because what that does is it takes the ability for your opponent to have pre-snap tells away. There's not as much information that they can gain pre-snap, and so they can't just structure a play to beat the defense that you're calling because they're I, ideally they're not going to know exactly what you're doing. This is why Dez, I think, was so effective in the Madden uh, things in the Ultimate Thanksgiving tournament because he basically called dollar three two DB fire pretty much every single play. He just made a bunch of different adjustments that nobody really could uh, really could uh, get dialed in on. So you have to make everything look the same. Um, the third or the second piece of a principle of elite uh, elite defense is I think to force field goals. Right, we talked a little bit about that. Make them take three, not seven. 
Uh, execution is essential to defense. And I would say simplicity, I think, is actually a really good piece for defense. You want your defenses to be simple so that you can execute them at a very high level. You don't need a lot of plays if you run the plays right, okay? That is kind of the big core uh, things of this. So I think Dollar actually checks all these boxes. And so I wanted to kind of walk you through and show you why. Um, we're going to just do the, the blitz today, and then tomorrow we'll go over some of the coverage adjustments that I like out of it. Uh, for some of the different meta formations. So auto alignment, what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna set this to base uh, in our coaching adjustments. What this is going to do is it's going to ensure that everything that we do from dollar is gonna by and large look the same, especially if we come out in the same play every single time, and I'll show you that on the field. Um, option defense, we're going to put this on conservative because most people just want to run with their quarterback. We want to take that away and turn every read option into an inside zone. Then we're going to come down here in our zone coverage. We're going to set this to match. I've getting a lot of questions about this. Um, if you put your zone coverage to match, even if you set zone drops, it's not that you're going to play an all-out match coverage like we would traditionally know as cover four quarters or cover six. What it does mean is your zones are going to react better to the routes on the field than if they were at default. So that's kind of the main reason why we want to have this on match. And then we're going to come out in the play DB fire. Now, if you want to get exclusive offensive and defensive eBooks, make sure to join my Patreon. It's only $10 to become a member. And I'm going to put a link to that in the description to get you access to all of my man 23 offensive and defensive eBooks. Now we can set some audibles here, right? If you want to play some press man, you want to play some off man, whatever you want to do, you can certainly set some audibles within this and it's very helpful to do so. I would recommend, you know, kind of again, what do you need in your scheme? Maybe you're a match guy, so you want to have cover six. Maybe you're a zone guy, so you want to have cover three cloud. Whatever it is that you want to do, you can do. But our base play in our number one play, our power play on the defensive side of the ball is our blitz. It's the foundation of any great defense is you have to be able to get pressure. DB Fire 2 allows us to do that really, really well. So um, if you come out here, you're going to see that that little slot corner on the running back side is always going to press up. It doesn't, and I'll show it to you out of another formation in a second. We're going to uh, ignore the right side corner for just a minute. I'm actually just going to put him in a vertical hook, and we're going to play kind of something like this. So this is just a four-man blitz, and what you're going to notice is it's going to come in consistently off of that edge. What that four-man blitz forces your opponent to do is now they have to block the running back. And even if I wanted to go as far as sending a two-man pressure, you see the consistency in which we can send pressure. So again, how do they block this blitz? It's actually not that complicated. All they have to really do to block the, the four-man pressure is they just have to block the running back on that side. And you'll see here he'll step up and block him, and now it becomes basically a game of can you get block sheds. But notice the reason as to why this is so powerful. Now they can only they can't run the running back on a route because the running back if the running back doesn't block then we're going to get pressure. Now I'm going to show you how this cross applies to other formations that you're going to face, and then we're going to talk a little bit about how do you actually um, ensure that you're getting pressure, uh, you know, against a blocked running back. So uh, if you come out here, you're going to see here, again, running back side slot corner steps up in the box to go uh, blitz him. If we want to just stand right here, you're going to see he's going to come off that right side pretty much every single time. As you can see, he comes off the running back side again. Now, how do you block the blitz? Again, very simple. All you got to do, block your running back. And as you can see, we're able to block the right side. Now, right here, we didn't, weren't able to block the left side, but we were able to block the right side. So that is really, really important. Now, another thing that I talked about was making everything look identical. Um, so we're going to come back out in the bunch. And what you're going to notice here is if I audible, so I'm in DB Fire 2. If I audible to any play, I'm going to audible to cover two man. Nobody moves. Okay, these adjustments are kind of bugged, so just hang with me here. Um, nobody moves. Okay, if I audible to cover one, nobody moves. Okay, I'm just moving my user, but nobody's really moving. So I can look like I'm in DB fire, and then I can do, I can audible to any of these plays, and nobody, the, the look doesn't change pre-snap. So it really opens up what I can do from a defensive perspective if I'm willing to run my defense on baseline because it's very it's very um, hard for people to tell. A lot of pro players will tell you they just don't know what you're doing um, in dollar, and it's what makes it so hard to score against. Now, I can also do things like, let's say that I wanted to make um, the blitz on the right side a little better, so I'm going to audible to spinner. 
what you can do is you can individually press that slot corner. What that's going to do is now he's on the line of scrimmage, and now he's in a blitzing threat. From there, what this does is now I have a threat to blitz off the left side, but I also have a threat that's going to blitz you off of the right side. So now if you block your running back, I can step that guy up, and as you can see, we're able to get pressure off of the left side, and we're able to get pressure off of the right side. So what this is going to force you to do from an uh, offensive perspective is you're going to have to block seven to pick up five. That is a significant numbers advantage for the defense, and that's why blitzing is so important on the defensive side of the ball. It's why it's the foundation. It doesn't mean that you have to blitz 80% of the time to be good. It just means you have to have the threat of the blitz. So, for example, I, I just manually press that slot, and this is what uh, a lot of really good Madden players will do, is now we're going to go to town on our adjustments. So we're going to man up the running back. We're going to man up the slot. Right. Maybe we're going to do some we're going to take those safeties. Maybe we put inside shade on them and then we're going to use them in coverage. And now we've taken DB fire and we've basically turned it into a man coverage where we can put an outside third on the wide side of the field and a cloud flat or soft squad on the short side. So now they're thinking, OK, well, I'm just going to quick dot you by putting this back out to the flat quick. And now they can't do that because you've got a defender standing right there. So however you want to structure it, if you want to be a more coverage-friendly player or a more blitz-happy player, that's fine. But you have to have the threat of the blitz in everything that you do. It is super, super important. Um, I think it's one of the most important things that you can do on the defensive side of the ball is to at least have the threat of the fact that I can blitz you and you're going to, I think, take your defense to a significantly higher level. Everything looks the same. I think that is the hallmark of any good defense you have to have. Whatever your defense is going to be, whether it's going to be a man-to-man -man focus, a match coverage focus, a zone focus, or if it's going to be a hybrid, you're going to use all three of those in your scheme, you have to make it all look the same. You have to make it all look the same. It's super, super important. And we teach you how to do that in our defensive ebooks on the Patreon page. For just $10, you'll be able to get access to all of my Man 23 offensive and defensive ebooks. So if you want to sign up for the Patreon, you can click the link on your screen or you can head down to the description and you can click the link down below.